Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my humble home, my humble casa in Livingston, Montana. Okay, I have tried to make this video about 10 times and screwed it up every time. I think the reason why is if I don't get this somewhat right, my wife is going to take a rolling pin and put a permanent dent in my skull. This story is a story about how I met my wife, Penny, and we've been married for 45 years. Now, if you don't like this kind of stuff, I suggest you just get gone. Save, 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 save us both a lot of trouble. Okay, the place where this occurred, where I met her, the city that I met her was in Burley, Idaho. That's in southern Idaho, very close to Twin Falls. It's, it's one of the potato capitals of the world. And both my brother and I were living down there and we were sharing an apartment because the work was good, the money was pretty good, and, and all that. And, you know, things weren't too good economically up here in Montana, you know. So but we'd only been down there for, you know, two and a half, three months, so we really didn't know what was shaking all that much, you know. Okay, but we're in our apartment this particular night which happened to be New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve between 1974 and 1975. You got it? The very night, you know, that, that kind of a deal. Well, also on scene was my brother-in-law from Montana who was married to my sister, you know. And before I go on any further, he had a really hopped-up Chevelle. You know, I'm not kidding you, man. This was a 1966 Chevelle or 67, I can't remember which. It had a 396 in it. You know, great big old Holly carburetor, a, a great big intake manifold, uh, pop-up pistons, I do believe, uh, fender well hooker headers, you know, uh, 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 big valves, uh, a Muncie four-speed, Schaefer, uh, uh, heavy-duty clutch and clutch plate and all that kind of stuff, you know. He had this thing all set up for really boogieing on down the road. Well, the thing of it is, Rick gets bored just sitting around the apartment, you know, on this New Year's night between 74 and 75. He says, Jim, he says, why don't we go out and drag Maine? Now, for you people that don't know what drag in Maine was, back in the day when we didn't have cell phones and androids and tablets and and, and laptops and all this other stuff. You, you pretty much had to go make your own fun. And sometimes some of that fun that we would go try to make was a little bit on the dangerous side. I, I'm just kidding, but not really, you know. But anyway, so we, we, we start this activity called Dr Dragon Main. That, 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 that's, uh, you know, the, because he wanted to get out of the apartment and all that. And Dragon Main is nothing more than finding one of the longest streets in your city or avenues or what have you and going from one end and then circling around and coming back to the other end. You see what I'm doing here? And it's going just like this, you know. And you're probably asking me, what do, what do you, what do you want to be doing that for? Well, for one thing, we were a bunch of fools. For another thing, we were bored. Now, usually uh, an activity like that, we were looking for girls. Anyway, that's that's what I thought I was doing, you know. Looking for girls and seeing what kind of, you know, seeing what kind of, uh, you know, larceny that we could get into. I'm just kidding about that, you know. But so, but now keep in mind, though, if I hadn't said this, Rick wanted to race people. He had that hopped up Chevelle. And he wanted to go out there, you know, and all that stuff. So we start, Harrison Avenue is the name of the avenue that that we we picked to run up and down because it looked like it was the busiest. You know, we hadn't lived in town very long, you know. And so, you know, on that, that avenue, that Harrison Avenue is about four miles long, man. It's a pretty doggone long avenue, you know, but... You know, we'd, we'd, we'd come from the north side, and then we'd come down to the south side, and there was a, a big grocery store there, Smith Food Kings. I remember that all too well. And there was a great big, huge parking lot. I always 
I, I, that always freaked me out how big of a parking lot that that place had. But what, what we would do is, you know, we're doing this circle thing like this, and we're picking up a few guys to, to race, and what we do is we went out of town like three or four miles or so, marked off with some paint a quarter of a mile, and we go out there and race them, you know, that kind of stuff. Now, through the course of the evening, Rick did pretty well, but there was one of them, one of them tribes of Idaho, Idaho boys down there that gave Rick a real run for his money, you know, that kind of a deal. So, anyway, after a while, you know, I'm kind of getting a little bit bored with this, you know, because there wasn't really, I think people were kind of afraid they might get busted by the cops or whatever have you. And anyway, every time that we went around this food, Smith Food King's parking lot, there was this old Buick setting right there. It wasn't setting back where the other cars were, and it wasn't exactly set down on Harrison. It was setting back, back about 20 yards or so from Harrison. And we went by, and I had noticed, I, you know, you know, drinking that, you know, that, that Bud Weiser, that Bud, that Bud Dummer, you know, my eyeballs got, my eyeballs got better. And I told Rick, I said, man, there's a couple of really nice looking girls in, in, in that old Buick right there. And, you know, and he goes, well, so what? You know, and really I can't blame him because after all, he was married to my sister, you know, so there, there I don't think there was no action going to go on there with me sitting there, you know. And But when he got the, uh, what do you care about it for? I said, look here, fool. I said, maybe I might want to go talk to him. Maybe I want to ask him for a date. You know, I really didn't feel like sitting there and explaining my libido problem. Okay, are you with me now? So finally he pulled up beside him, you know, and I got out and I went over and I introduced myself to my wife-to-be. Of course, you don't know those things, you know. You know, these people say that they, oh, I, I knew that we were, the first time I ever saw him, I knew we were going to get buried. Nonsense. Anyway, I, you know, I got to jabbering with my wife and everything and you know, and, and come to find out that car, that old Buick she was in, belonged to her parents. And so these, her and her girlfriend says, hey, look, you know, they found it kind of interesting. I was from my, or Montana or whatever. I mean, they go, why don't you come right around and hang around with us for a while? I says, oh, well, well, okay, sounds good. You know, that was really the master plan. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> so anyway, Penny's girlfriend, like being a nice little girl, jumps in the back seat. I'm over shotgun. I'm riding shotgun, and Penny's driving. And so we take off and start driving around, you know, and my brother-in-law and my brother, who was totally innocent, I got to make sure of that because he don't like me making mistakes on these stories, but he was totally innocent. Him and, him and Rick took off and went somewhere. I know they were probably still to, to drag racing or whatever have you. But we start our circling around and driving around, but we didn't drive around for very long. And per, pretty soon, that Penny's girlfriend, which I can't remember her name, she goes, stop, Penny, there's Terry. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking over at Penny and I go, who's Terry? You know, because as, as far as I'm concerned, Terry could have been a serial not job or whatever, you know what I mean, you know, I don't know no Terry, I don't even know if I want to know any Terry, but, but, but apparently these gals knew Terry pretty good, and so, and so, they invited Terry, I can't remember if he was walking or he was in another car or whatever have you, but anyway, he jumps in the back seat with this other, with Penny's girlfriend like that, you know. And, and of course, he, I turned around and said, hey, my name's Jim, you know, like that. And he goes, oh, I'm Terry. Now listen to this. I'm Terry Maybe. I said, maybe, is that your, really your last name? He says, yeah, M-A-Y-B-E. And I'm thinking, oh, that's kind of a, you know, weird name, you know, whatever have you. 
So Penny and I, we go driving around. We're making small talk, and these people in the back seat are making small talk or whatever have you. And I remember we stopped at one of the gas stations. I want, I was running out of beer. Couldn't be doing that. I couldn't keep the, you know, I was six foot, I was, I was seven foot six and 390 pounds, and <laughs> I couldn't keep that lie going unless I kept the whistle wet. So anyway, we, we get the beer in the car and we, we, we head out and we, we, we drive around and find us some kind of a secluded spot. And where that secluded spot is, I have no idea. It could have been a, it, 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 it could have been a Mormon uh, LDS a church parking lot. I'm just kidding about that. It could have been a canal bank. It could have been anywhere, you know. And so... Pretty, pretty soon, you know, Penny and I, did. we shut the car off and maybe had the radio on. I don't even remember. And it gets kind of quiet back there in that back seat, you know what I mean? For Well, for a little while, anyway. And so, uh, pretty soon, you know, I, I started he hearing these guttural sounds. These sounds like if you're out in the jungle or something, you know. You know, so, sounds that I can't even, sounds that I can't even describe. Animalistic sounds, barnyard sounds. Let's put it that way, you know. And so, you know, I, I'm kind of sitting there like this going, do I think, that, do I know what's happening here or what's the deal, you know. And finally, curiosity got the best of me and I go, oh, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I just really can't say about the rosy ass I've seen, you know what I mean? I can't elaborate about that. And and I thought to myself, Terry may be my ass. Because I, I kidded the wife later on, not that night. I started calling this dude Terry Positive. There was no maybe about this guy, you know. He, he was flopping around. In, he, he, he was flopping around in that back seat like a like a fish out of water or whatever have you, you know. So, I, so, so see, my evil mind goes to work and I'm thinking, well, these fuckers back here, excuse my French, I didn't mean to say, these people back here are having fun. I'm, you know, I wonder if I can have a little fun with Penny here, you know. You know, so I start, you know, kind of, you know, making out with her, you know, and getting a little, you know, getting a handful here and there. And, and all that, and getting actually a lot of handful, you know, because I was one of these kind of guys, man. I, you're, you're burning daylight with a woman, man, if you're not taking care of manly business. And you quote me on that, you know. And, and after a bit, it didn't take my wife very long to realize what the hell I was after. And she looked over to me like just like this, and she goes, oh, I love that. I love that when girls do that. Oh. I don't do stuff like that on a first date. That's what she said. I don't do stuff like that on a first date. And I said, well, look here, Missy. I said, when can I cash in? The second date? <laughs> when can I cash in the second date? And my wife's, my wife's face got red and things got silent and everything and I th I think I think she wanted to you know probably give me a little boot in the rear end or nothing like that but here I, that's the end of my joke that's the end of my story guys because I am not I'm gonna let you guess when I did get to be romantic with my wife and and we went together for we actually lived went together and I eloped with my wife we lived together for about a year before we got married. So, but, you know, I, I, I'm just going to let you guess on the rest of it all. That's my story. I, I hope I didn't forget anything on this. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for enduring me. <laughs> and we shall see you on down the trail. And adios, my friends. Where do I get out of here, Ad? I always screw this up. Bye.